Welcome back, everybody. My name is Emily, and this is... Ansley! What are we going to sketch and paint today? Today, we're going to be doing an easy jungle scene. Yes, I'm so excited. We're going to include trees. We're going to have some really neat light effects. And we might even add monkeys. Oh. All right, so supplies for this project. You're going to need some watercolor paper. We are using Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper. This is just a really affordable cotton watercolor paper that I love to use for this channel because they are already pre-cut. And we've actually taped them down to our surface just using some masking tape. We each have a pencil, a watercolor brush. These are silver black velvet size eight round brushes, but you can use any round brush you have. Some paper towel. And today we're gonna be using liquid watercolors. So these are really fun because they're super pigmented. They're already wet for you. So you don't have to add a ton of water. The only reason you would add water is to make them maybe not so bright because they do come out really bright but that's part of the fun. So we're just using four colors, yellow, green, blue, and black. And before we start, we're gonna do some warm ups. There's gonna be a couple of things in this painting that might be a little bit tricky to draw with your brush, right? Yeah. I have an example of something that I tried out earlier today, and I know you might be thinking, whoa, that looks really hard, but it's not. We'll sketch the trees, and that's all we're gonna draw. Everything else we're gonna do with paint. So what we'll need to practice is painting these straight lines up and down in a really light color, and then painting these ferns. And I'll show you an easy way to paint those leaves. So that's what we'll practice first. Grab your brush. We'll start with green. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like it's squishing. Is that a little bit of blue? That one was not as gooey. And then the black. We're going to use the black for sure for that dark tree silhouette and the monkey. I'm going to try to keep them kind of far apart so they're not <laughs> touching each other. And I just have a heat tool also because in between layers we might want to dry our paper so that it goes faster. If you have a hair dryer, that'll work just fine. So the first brush stroke we're gonna try out is gonna be our leaf. And I like to wet my brush first and then dry it on the paper towel and kind of twist it so that it comes to a nice fine point. So for our green palm leaf, I'm gonna add a little bit of water over here just because I don't want all this paint to be super dark. Look how vibrant that is anyway. Very, Why don't very we mix bright. in a little yellow? I'll show you, we're gonna be mixing some yellow with our green, just so that we have more of a natural looking green. This green is not natural looking in my opinion, but mm -hmm. if you add a little bit of yellow, then it becomes more of a spring green. It's not quite so crazy. All right, so grab some paint and for our leaf, we're gonna start with a center line. And so I want it to curve something like this. So I'm gonna start with the end of the palm leaf and have to use just the tip of the brush, barely touching the paper. If you flatten your brush down, it's gonna make a fat line. We want a skinny line. Good, just like that. So you can do a couple of those. You could even have one that's kind of going up and away out the other direction. I think I don't have enough paint in my brush. Definitely grab some more paint then. And you can even grab some of the more thick, darkly colored paint if you prefer. Remember to keep your tip of your brush really pointed. That's gonna be the hardest part about these is creating fine lines. So that's why we are practicing. All right, so let's do the leaf part. The next step looks like this. We're going to start with a skinny tip of the brush here at the top and create a line coming right next to your center line and do a whole bunch of those Oops. parallel to each other like this. Okay, so we're just putting these across from each other. Now look at what it looks like when I paint them together. It looks like a V shape, V shape, V shape. But I kind of like to do one side at a time. Try to keep them nice and close together. Oh, mine looks kind of bulky. Okay, so make them a little skinnier, maybe a little longer. And as you come down the fern, make them longer. See how I'm making mine longer at the bottom? And fatter. Longer, fatter leaves. So you have a couple more opportunities to try making these pretty as you can. You don't have to start at the top, you could start at the bottom. We just wanna make sure that the ones at the bottom are a little bit longer. And I'm having them point upward, like the side of a V shape. So I'm trying to just keep my brush floating above the paper and I'm looking at the tip of it and it just barely touches and then I kind of flick it up. Wow, those are so good, Ansley. Good job, those are awesome. So the next thing we're gonna practice, let's grab another piece of paper. Next, we're going to try taking some black and watering it down. So I'm just gonna barely grab a little of my paint. Ooh, look how dark that is. So I need to add lots of water and you can grab some of this too, cause there's plenty. Make it super watery. Okay, so for these trees that we're gonna try practicing, we need watery, watery paint. 
and it's okay if your brush is really wet. But here's the thing, don't let it squash down on the paper like this, watch. Here's how we make a fat tree. And I don't really want that. I want a skinny tree. So once again, just like with our leaf, with our fern leaves, we're gonna take the tip of the brush starting at the top and I'm resting my hand and I'm just gonna kinda of draw a track like this with my hand down. So watch, we'll start at the top. I can see straight where, line. I can see where you're going, like mm -hmm. these like those three trees. trees in the background. They don't even have branches, but they look far away because they're so foggy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna try to do. So try practicing some straight lines coming down, and even more water mixed in will make it even lighter. So they look further away. It's a great way to make something look realistic with atmosphere, is by using super light values to make it look further away. I had an accident with the shading, okay. so I tried to keep moving it down the way. Yeah, and something you'll figure out with watercolor is if you try to mess with it or fix it too much, it usually ends up looking worse, right? I suppose. <laughs> so we have to kind of just leave it alone most of the time. Now look at my trees. They look really fake, don't they? Do you know why that is? Because there's no branches in between or moss. No branches. There's also, they're all evenly spaced apart. Does the jungle look like that? No, no, just cross it out. <laughs> no, some are crooked, some are a little closer together, some are further away. So we want to add some variety, some branches, some imperfections well, to make it look more like a forest. Look. No, but look at how the trees are not perfectly spaced like railings on a stairway. <laughs> <laughs> this one's further apart, these are closer together. So that looks more natural, right? It does. Yeah. Try practicing just a couple more trees and then I think we're probably ready to start. Slide in the same position. Yeah. Nice. That was such a good tree. All right. Let's set those aside. We are going to change our water and we'll get started with the actual painting. All right, so if any of you kiddos kind of struggle with mixing colors, ask an adult to help you with mixing those colors because it can be a little bit tricky. The only kind of mixing we're gonna need to do today is with our yellow and our green, and I think that's pretty much it. The rest of the mixing is actually gonna happen on the paper. What we're gonna do is grab our brush loaded with water, clean water, and you're gonna paint your whole paper just water first. <laughs> it's Here the wet go. and wet technique, right? You got it, yes. All right, so we just want to make sure there's no big puddles of water. That's why you wipe your brush. Yeah. Make sure you're doing that. But we do want it to be wet all over. Not too gloopy, but not too dry. Gloopy, is that a technical term? Yep, and if there are any puddles, you can just take your brush and kind of spread the puddle around. You want to make it nice and even. Your paper might start to buckle a little bit, but that's okay, that's totally normal for watercolor paper. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a yellow circle in the middle of our painting. So we'll start with our yellow and yeah, just go ahead and green. draw a giant circle. <laughs> That's taken up most of the paper. Sure is. And if it's too bright, remove some paint in your water, dry in your paper towel, and then you can go back in and spread it out a little bit. Um. I think I'm moving like lighter or something. I left some white in the middle, but you don't have to. The next color we're gonna grab is blue. And I'm actually gonna start on the outer edges and just paint a corner like this, almost like bookends. <laughs> we gotta work fast while the paper's still wet so that it spreads out nicely. Uh-oh. That's okay. Dry in your paper towel a little bit. You might have too much water in your brush. Then spread it really fast, quick, quick, quick like big old C's. Then I'm gonna take green, and that'll be my next color, right next to the blue. It's okay to get paint on your tape. Ooh, do you add your green yet? No, it might be too late. Hurry, hurry, you can do it. Here, let me re-wet it for you a little bit. I think yours dried out pretty quick. That looks nice, way to go. Just keep drying, rinsing and drying your brush if you want fresh, bright colors. I believe this is like the background. I can totally see that in this. It's just all dry, you get it? Yeah. Like the dry you paint. You sure can. This is the vortex, the jungle vortex. We're getting pulled in. Wow, wow. <laughs> no, we're getting pulled into the sun. 
It's so bright. <laughs> Look away. <laughs> and you know what? Honestly, this part's going to be covered up with a tree for the most part, so it's okay if it's not perfect. So let's dry them. Yeah. This is a good time for a joke break. Yes, it is. <laughs> what did the little tree say to the big tree? Leave me alone. Our next and last joke, why was the tree stumped? Because it couldn't get to the root of the problem. <laughs> All right, next we're going to sketch our trees on. Did you know you can sketch over the painting? Probably. Probably, yeah. Because it's dry. So let's take a look at our little picture here. We can start with a skinnier tree on this side. I have it coming all the way down to the corner and up, but you can make it any shape you want. Remember that for this tree, it does not have to be perfect. It can be kind of bumpy. And you want to make it, you know, a little bit fat, not just one skinny line. <laughs> okay, draw your tree on. And if your paper's still a little damp, try not to press too hard. Otherwise, the paint will sort of puddle into it. So light marks are best. And before we do the actual trees, the darkest ones, we get to paint our ghost trees. That'll be fun. Oh, the silhouetted trees. Yeah. Okay, try not to make it come too far into the center because this one is going to be the star of the show. Pretty good. Okay, now for this tree, the really, really big one, I think about making this giant big shape over here that curves to the corner. So you can start with just the trunk, like this. Simple. Yep, and try not to press too hard. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna draw a big gnarly, knobby branch coming out in front of our center, like that. Good, I like that. And then just make it a little bit thicker. So run another line along the same shape, just a little bit above it. You can also make it a little bit different because, hey, two sides of a branch aren't the same. It's true. Now I'm gonna do another shorter one here at the top. Remember, you can make your branches any shape you want. This is your jungle. Your jungle, your rules. <laughs> and you get to paint whatever you want or draw. Your jungle, your rules, I like that. Okay, now that might feel really pointless because we're not gonna do anything with that next. We're gonna do our ghost trees next. Make sure your brush is wet and dried, so it's just damp, not super wet. Okay, let's grab some of that gray that we mixed up earlier. And off to the left, maybe about a third of the way over. So if you think about it in thirds, I'm gonna draw out my first tree starting at the top. Remember how we do it? We start up here and we go. And then I'm gonna put one a little further away. Start at the top and slide down. Yeah, nice ghost tree. Whew. I'm gonna do a skinny one next to that. This, I am, I'm not doing this. It's literally my paint is drying in the brush so that makes it look farther away. That's perfect. You're using up paint and so there's a lighter tree. Uh -huh. The brush is doing it all. <laughs> oh, it's, painting is pointless without a brush. <laughs> That's true. How about painting some more trees? Okay. <laughs> I'm even putting some really thicker ones on the outer edges of my painting. Kind of darkening up the sides with a big brush stroke like that. Well, that's where the tree is. Yeah, we'll go over the top with that though. Yeah, you kind of have to think when you're painting with watercolors about working from the background to the foreground. So we start with the lightest colors and then work our way darker. That's definitely the easiest way to approach it. And you can add little crazy branches coming out, little skinny brush strokes that just kind of go whoosh, 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 like that. It looks kind of abandoned. Teeny tiny little bitty bitty branch. All right, I like our ghost trees. Those are looking awesome. Okay, should we dry it and then on to the next layer? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, what's the next layer? Any ideas? Ferns. Over these. I'm ready to do some ferns. So we're gonna paint some greenery next and then our big trees are gonna go in front of the greenery. So grab your brush again. This time we're gonna mix some yellow and green I'm a little nervous about the ferns. So I just mixed up a really nice forest green for you, something Dang. more earthy. And you can put these anywhere you want. I want to have mine over here off to the left a little bit, maybe a couple underneath the big tree. I'll show you guys my painting again so you can see kind of where I put the ferns. Are you ready to try it? Remember, start with a curved line. These are going to look a little bit smaller than the ones we practiced with. Good job! I love it, that looks great.
and it looks interesting when they're going different directions a little more earthy and natural here at the bottom of my painting i'm just going to put some blobs undergrowth and grass foliage and things that looks fantastic yeah that's beautiful i'm gonna put some green up here in the corner using the tip of my brush and you can do this too will help you make it look like leaves you can just kind of blot and when we put our black tree across the front then all these leaves will look like they're kind of behind and in the jungle hidden right And you can add as many leaves and ferns and branches and grasses as you want. Even looking up some photos online of jungle scenes can really help give you some ideas for what to include. You've never painted ferns before, have you? Never. Never. Are we ready to add our final trees? That looks great. Seriously, Yay. very and lush. And done. All right, that one dried a lot quicker. The last thing is to do our big black trees in the foreground. I would start with the one on the left just because if you're right-handed like me, you don't want to drag your hand through the wet paint. I'm a right-hander too. Yeah, so we're going to grab black. You can still see your pencil lines great. If not, just is draw it, with paint. Is it just dark black? Sure is. And it should look really dark. We want it to be dark. The darkest thing in the painting. Now you might want to color quickly so that it doesn't form any hard edges and finish this tree first. That way you don't drag I can't your see hand my, I can't see my lines anymore. Well, that's okay. Here's what you do. Just take your brush and pull it all the way to the top to create a complete shape for your tree. That does help. Just draw with your paint. Now the thing that you can do to add some cool jungle effects is these streaks of moss hanging from the branches. You see those? I see that. And the way I did that was I just took the tip of my brush, touched a branch, and went boop, just a flick of the wrist, to create that look of moss hanging down. So once you get your branches in, then you can add the moss. And once you're done with your smaller tree, you can paint the bigger one. I mean, the nice thing about these jungle trees is they're super bumpy. You don't have to make your lines perfect. When you get to the big section of the trunk, just color faster. Yeah, if your brush starts to feel dry, grab a little more paint, dip the tip of your brush in water. That can help make your brush not feel so clingy, like it's sticking to the paper. So I think I'm gonna make my monkey hang from the tree. I think that'll make it a little more different. A little fun and unique from my first painting. All right, you're gonna leave room for your two big branches. Um, I'm trying to I can't paint around the fern, really, and I oh. want it to still be there. So oh. I just get a sharper brush. Yeah. So what you can do is just use the tip of your brush. I had to cover up the grass. That's hard to do, yeah. But you can actually paint around your fern with the tip of your brush like this. You might have to go like this to get the end of your brush. I know. Kind of weird how we have to hold our brush sometimes to get around things. That looks really good, actually. Once you fill in that gap, it's going to look a lot better. Wow, yours, I mean, having that coming in front of the tree is pretty cool. So it looks like it's behind a little? Yeah, it makes it even more 3D. Look how cool that looks! Yeah, very good. In the dark. All right. I think it looks good that way. It looks like it's got some uh, texture, some bark maybe. All right, so the last thing is to add a monkey if you want to. How about I'll add a monkey and you can add a bird. You can, here's how you do, can do a bird, watch. Just take the tip of your brush and you have a couple little birds flying, or they look like bats actually. <laughs> <laughs> bats in the jungle. A couple little bats or birds. If you wanna add a monkey, I'm gonna have his okay. arm coming cool. down. added a monkey and I like him. Cute. Feel free to add whatever little critters you want. You can have them silhouetted against your background. Andley's gonna add a bird. I like it. It's gonna start off as a circle. Uh-huh. That 
That's very cute. I love your bird. Those look amazing. Way to go. All right, let's remove our tape so we can reveal our pretty picture with pretty borders. Wow, awesome job. <laughs> you crushed it today. Great work. Are you happy with it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching, and I hope you can subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Ha, ha, ha.